Hey everybody and welcome back to Investment Honey where we talk about various crypto projects. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I am not your financial advisor, do not provide financial advice on the channel, and I don't even encourage you to invest, but what I am going to do is share with you my own personal opinion and views on the projects discussed on the channel. So um, we've got Haya Fun, uh, that's the project that we're taking a look at. Um, I do you know, want to let you know that this did have an audit uh, passed with issues. Um, the only issue that really was found was that the owner can change swap settings. But I understand that this wasn't listed as some low severity concern. You know, so, um, so again, if I'm highlighting a concern in any video, obviously just know that it's either being listed as a high severity concern or a medium severity concern. So um, they do, or they did have a, a pre-sale on pink sale. I'll go ahead and I'll take a look at that here in a minute. Um, team is not photodoxed. The team is not KYC'd. Uh, so essentially the team is anonymous. That is one of the concerns and red flags that I have uh, listed, you know, uh, for this particular project, you know, alongside the audit issue. So um, moving on over to the pre-sale. So we, we see 100 BNB, you know, um, hard cap, you know, that was filled. They had 201 contributors. I do like the fact that they had a real small max buy. Uh, the minimum buy, you know, was 0.4. But here's the issue that I have is that uh, basically, you know, all the buys are, are, you know, if you average it out, it's basically, you know, 0.4, you know, 0.4 and a half, right? So um, I think if you're going to, you know, do a minimum buy, I mean, make it a minimum, you know, do you like 0 0.1 like most projects do? And, you know, there should be a separation between the minimum and the max, you know, so uh, just so that you're able to ensure, you know, the people that have less to spend can actually spend to get in. So, uh, but yeah, that's just my opinion, personal opinion on that. Now the emission market cap is supposed to be 76, you know, 265. Uh, you know, liquidity lock at time, 365 days, you know, after the pool ends. You know, didn't really see anything, you know, hugely concerning in regards to token metrics. Um, and then they give you your socials. No KYC badges, like I mentioned, you know, but they do have the audit badges and socials up here. So here's the white paper. So as always on this channel, we don't encourage you to invest, but we do encourage you to get informed. And it starts with looking over and through that white paper. And then we got some links up here in the navigation bar. So this says, welcome to Hive Fund, the best decentralized charity fundraising platform. And it goes over the story here. More than just a sport, football has the power to unite communities regardless of their race, gender, age, you know, culture, culture or nationality. Inspired by this, Hive Fund was created to assist impoverished children in Senegal who love football but can't reach their full potential due to lack of money, food, and facilities. With the combination of DeFi and DAO, Hive Fund attempts to show investors that giving is receiving. So different aspects of the token include staking, charity donation, NFT DAO, and decentralization. So we see on the tokenomics, you know, what the supply is, they got a bunch of it. 12% going to liquidity, 58.8 uh, to staking and NFT rewards, 8.8 to the ecosystem and marketing, 4.4% to the team, and 16% to the IDO. On transaction fees, users are going to be charged 0 or 7% of the total transaction volume, depending on whether they are buyers or sellers. The fee will then be distributed among several sources to ensure the project's long-term development. So 1% going to liquidity, 1% to buy back and burn, 1% to the insurance wallet, 2% to reward holders, and 2% to treasury. Now, if we take a look at their roadmap, they got a number of different you know, things listed in, in throughout their five phases. So we see um, project concept design, the website launch, you know, smart contract, audit and KYC. Uh, but like I said, you know, they're not KYC'd, and this was phase one. So why aren't they KYC'd? I don't know. DAP development. Community development, and then we go over to paint, you know, phase two with the pre sale and pink sale, pancake swap, and then CMC and CG. So, staking protocol, DAP mainnet, INO sale. And I mean, again, they really don't need this because literally every project is trying to go ahead and get listed, you know, out the gate, you know, on these two right here. Phase three, we see partnership expansion, NFT collection, the DAO, charity activities, World Cup prediction, big marketing campaign. We don't really know what that marketing campaign is going to look like. Central exchange listing, merchandise, you know, so they're getting merch, swap function, the swap's coming. Spots for football tournament, worldwide billiard promotions. I don't really care for the billiard promotions. I think they're wasting money, honestly, because a lot of people, they just doesn't really translate into new holders, you know, because you've got a billboard up. So you spent the money, which I think can be better spent you know in terms of adding more utility you know or marketing outside of billiards you know or um 
uh, you know, what do I think in, um, in the poo coin ads, and a lot of people do, I think those are a waste of time as well. I'm not saying they would do that, but I just think that billboards are up there with poo coin ads. They just really don't translate into a lot of new holders. Sport prediction, and then we see, you know, phase five, sport brand collaboration, metaverse integration, multi-chain integration. So they're going multi-chain. I'd wonder what, what chains they're going to. More charity activities, DAP2 development, roadmap update. So I love the fact that they do indicate a roadmap update here. What I don't like is that they're not indicate, indicating what they've already done. You know, that's an easy thing to do, you know, but not very many projects do it. So, um... But yeah, you know, I think that they need to go ahead and be able to indicate, you know, what's what's coming, you know, what's pending, what's ongoing, you know, just more communication type signals. So as people look at their roadmap, they can actually see, you know, where they're at in terms of development. Uh, and you guys have heard me share, you know, my thoughts in terms of roadmap several times, you know, on this channel. So I just think that, you know, a lot of projects don't get it right when it comes to roadmaps. Uh, you know, but beyond that, that's all I'm really going to add on this project. I hope that... Uh, you know, if there's any interest in this project uh, that you'll take, you know, the recommendation that I give, you know, on all of my projects, you know, that are covered on this channel, that it's not, you know, we don't encourage you to invest, but, you know, my hope is that you will go ahead and take that next step to get informed and look through the documentation and get into the social communities and ask questions and engage, you know, so that you can develop your own signals that help to, you know, inform yourself in terms of, you know, do I want to participate in this or not? Not based on FOMO or hype or what somebody else told you about a project, but what you know personally uh, through your own evaluation and assessment. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll leave the links in the description for you below, and you guys enjoy the day.